Hello once again, this is Chris and this is my channel, Barnon11970. I appreciate you guys taking the time to check out one of my videos. And I hopefully have another video that's going to help you guys think a little bit deeper. We're going to do some learning today and unprogramming some of the things you've been programmed. And as the title of this video suggests, what proves you are you? We're going to get pretty deep here, so hopefully you guys will pay attention and listen with an open mind. Now, if I was to take you to court and you had to prove you are who you say you are, how would you do that? Well, many people would say, well, I have a birth certificate or I have a driver's license or I have some form of identification. Well, let me ask you this. Can somebody create false ID? They sure can. So can that absolutely prove who you are? It sure can't. Well, what about a signed document? And say, oh, well, here's my signature. They may even verify it and says, oh, it looks like your signature. But can they, can they prove that your, was, your hand was the one on the pen that made the signature at the time it happened? Can't somebody forge a signature? People have done it. What makes you distinguishable from anyone else? What is different in you that no one else can copy? Well, that's your DNA strand. Each person's DNA is different than anyone else's. No two are the same. You ever see a movie where they usually like it's a Dracula movie or a monster movie or some kind of scary movie where somebody signs in blood. Now I'm not suggesting people cut themselves and start signing things in blood. So, you know, don't take it the wrong way. Don't turn it into something weird. But when you sign something in pen, that pen can be forged. If no one's there to witness your signature, how can they prove that you were the one that did it? Even if you say you did, you could be lying. Somebody could force you to say that. Your ID can be falsified. But technically, when, when you see any of those movies where somebody writes their name in blood, well, what's in their blood? DNA. What's the DNA? The blueprint that makes you. So technically... Somebody putting their name in blood proves without a doubt who did it over a pen or your ID. And that's why I talk about in some of the videos that many people like you see here, the truth about the United States law and you, extended version, the regular version, and there's even a condensed version. I talk about how they legally take over you and make you into a corporation. Now, it's not like all of a sudden you become a McDonald's building or something. A corporation is nothing more than a name registered. It's a registered trademark. It's a corporation. It's a name. That's all a corporation is. It's not a building. And when you're born, what's the first thing that they do is they take a blood sample. Where do they take it from? They usually take it out of the bottom of your foot. Well, it's another name for the bottom of your foot. Well, that's your soul, isn't it? So when they extract that blood, they've extracted the proof of who you are. And if you don't claim who you are by the age of 18, I believe, you are considered abandoned property because you abandoned that blood, that blueprint that makes you different from anyone else because they took the proof of you as you. You could sign whatever you want. You could show 5,000 different forms of ID. doesn't mean it's really you, but your DNA can be matched by nobody else but you. So when you're born, and they extract that blood, and you don't come back and say, hey, that's part of me, I'm claiming it. They consider you lost at sea, dead at sea, and they create a fictional character with your name and place it on identification certificates, pieces of paper like your birth certificate, not certificate of live birth, or your driver's license, or any kind of government ID. That name is not you, although it looks like you. So... When you see it for what it really is, you know, the more I learned, the more I learned how to put things in better perspective. Because I can see some of those videos. If you've never seen this stuff before, you're going to hear things like, oh, I'm a corporation. They take things from my soul. And there's, you got to get to certain levels. So this is kind of bringing it back to, to lesson 101. 
for people that are just learning these things. That's how this country has used us for collateral since 1933 when the country went bankrupt. Let's say, for example, you have a watch. Falls off your wrist, you don't realize it. Somebody finds it and decides, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to bring it to the local police station. And they put it in a lost and found. Well, you have 30 days to claim it. Otherwise, it's no longer yours. It's considered abandoned, and then anybody can take it. So that's how they trick you. When you're born, they create a registration number, a.k.a. social security number, country of origin, which is your birthplace, and your parents are your manufacturers. It's, it's a business deal. That's why your birth certificate is on the same registration form as if, is if you were going to register your car. You ever notice that? Your birth certificate is on the same registration form as your car. It's property because it sounds crazy or it's something you've never been told. You're just going to automatically dismiss it and your emotions are going to override your intellectual side, your thought process, your reptilian brain. The fight or flight is going to say, oh, I don't want to hear this is crazy. Let me shut down. And you don't have logical free will thought. But think about that and research this. Find out for yourself. This is how they control the people. And they use fear or reward or distraction. So they'll have plenty of entertainment, plenty of ways that you could get lots of money for doing the wrong thing, and plenty of ways to scare you. And if they don't tell you about these things, how do you search for something you don't know about? If you were adopted as a baby, if you were born and your natural born parents gave you up for adoption, you were adopted the next day and you lived your whole life thinking your parents are your real parents and you don't know anything about the fact that you were adopted. How many days are you going to spend looking for your natural parents? Well, it's going to be zero. Why? Because you don't know they exist because no one told you. So how do you search for something you don't know about? So is there any wonder why no government official will talk about these things? They get paid lots of money to look the other way and laugh at those who talk about it. And they pay others to do that very thing, a.k.a. some of the trolls. Some people just don't like people, but it's the trolls that start the stuff. That's why they never debate facts and talk to you, you know, man to man. They'll just take away your credibility. It's like, like you ever see politicians when they talk to each other, they attack each other's credibility. It's like, oh, this person stole from this person and that person didn't pay their taxes. And that, or this person slept, cheated on their wife. They don't talk about the actual things. They just get your emotions. Oh, I don't like that person. Who cares about what they stand for and what they've done? I, I don't like that person, so I won't listen. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. See no evil. That's why it's three monkeys. Don't we come from apes, supposedly? I say that facetiously. So you can't prove who you are unless you prove it with your DNA. You can get that from a hair strand. Get that from your blood, skin sample. But when you are born and they take the mother's placenta and they take the blood from your soul, the bottom of your foot, they've taken the very proof that claims who you are. And when you don't go and get it, it becomes abandoned property. And if you know anything about the lost and found, once something has been officially labeled as abandoned, anybody can take it. And they can do with it whatever they want. So what the governments do is knowing, because they don't ever tell you this, they know everybody is going to be abandoned at sea because you're not technically dead. That's why shows like The Walking Dead are so popular because guess what, guys? You're The Walking Dead. You ever see a prison show where a person's about to get executed? And they're walking them to the uh, execution chamber. What do they say? Dead man walking. So you're not dead as in a corpse. Even though you work for a corporation, and that's why marriages and things need licenses or certificates because it's a merger of two corporations, you're the walking dead. You're not physically dead. But legally, you're lost at sea because you never claim the very thing that says who you are. And they get you to think that signing your name is what does it prove who you are. That's why there's sin in sign. 
keep proving who you are the way they keep telling you and wonder why we keep losing more and more. You are collateral. Well, at least your name is. And the way they get away with it is no one fights it. Just like if you lost that watch and you never went to claim it, you no longer have a right to it. Because if it was that important, you would have received it. You would have went and gotten it. You would have went to find it. So the government is committing fraud against you, your family, your loved ones, your friends, the people that work for the military, people that work for the ambulances, the fire departments, the police departments, everything. Verify the stuff and find out. Don't use your emotions like, oh, I hate this person. It's stupid. It's crazy. That's how they continue to keep it controlled. Because the best way to keep people from learning the truth is make it silly or crazy or uncomfortable for you because it's not the same as what you've been told. Tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. But like I said in the title of this video, in the beginning of this video, where I said, prove who you are. Show me an ID that can't be made. Somebody else could make it. To, to show me a signature that can't be forged. But try and duplicate your DNA. It's the only thing that proves you are who you are. And they own it. And they use you as collateral for bank loans. That's how they keep getting all this money from a fictional uh, bank called the Federal Reserve, which is a private-owned entity, not part of the United States, owned by the very stockholders that own the banks that we bailed out. And who pays the bill? We do. Why? Because we're the collateral. So they're using us as collateral to get all of this money made out of thin air from a place that makes nothing. Please tell me what the Federal Reserve manufactures or sells or creates to have all this money. Where does it come from? No one wants to pay attention to that. But they borrow it for themselves, which they could make multiple times that amount in invisible made money. It's called fractional banking. And then give us the bill. And then they tell you, well, you got to pay your taxes because they tell you taxes pay for bridges, roads, and schools. Yeah, that's not true. It's going to pay the previous debt because they keep creating only the principal and not the interest. That's why there's a debt ceiling. That's why there's a fiscal cliff and it keeps rising and it will continue to rise until one day it collapses in on itself because everything's so expensive you can't buy a piece of bread for more than $500. It'll never get to that point. So this video is to wake up the sleeping, sleeping masses. It's not to anger you. Well, it should anger you, but not. don't direct your anger at me, the one trying to help you. Direct it at the people that have been lying to you that you've continually applauded because you didn't know. And now you know. What do you plan on doing about it? Keeping it to yourself does nothing. Dismissing it because it sounds crazy does nothing. It's like I said before, and they've said throughout history, truth is stranger than fiction. And like... Um, Mark Twain once said, of course, truth has to be stranger than fiction, because fiction has to make sense. Wise words. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this made you think. And for those that watch this and are angry and want to lash out at me for doing nothing more than trying to open your eyes, then you have to wonder why you're so angry. And it just means you're programmed. We all were. We don't have to be. Unless we choose to be. That's up to you. What you do with this information totally rests on you. But if people sit there and do nothing, then they have no one to blame but themselves, that nothing has changed. This is Chris. This is my channel, Barnon11970. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you next video.